Okay, so the Suvat equations are fairly straightforward, but actually using them for real world problems gets a bit more tricky. Uh, and what we have here is maybe a person, and they're going to drop an object from uh, sort of head height. Uh, and what we can do is by basically just using that information, we can work out how quickly the object actually impacts with the ground and also how long it takes to fall. So here we have an example of a SUVAC kind of question. Uh, a mug is dropped from perhaps the height of two meters. How fast does it hit the ground and how long does it take to fall? Well, uh, a fairly straightforward example, and this is my approach. First of all, um, we need to think about maybe what we know, drawing a diagram, some assumptions we can make. So first of all, uh, we're gonna take this kind of real, real world uh, problem and simplify it into the kind of physics language that we need. So first of all, a diagram. And all I'm going to do is take this kind of real world situation and simplify it as much as possible. So here we have ground level, here we have the mug represented by a dot, and what it does is it falls under gravity and it falls a distance of two meters. So that's the first thing that we need to know. Um, what else do we know about it? Well, we can write down these letters. And this would be my top tip. Every time you have a, an equation to do with motion, write down to see that vertically. And if you do this every time, you'll never make a mistake. So once we've got this, we can start filling in with what we know. Do we know the displacement or how far that moves? Well, we do, it's 2.0 meters. And what I've done here is I've made sure I've used uh, the normal SI units of meters, and I've put this down to two significant figures, which is what it was given to in my question. Do I know how fast it uh, was initially traveling? Well, I do, it was zero. This often isn't given to you explicitly, but it's implied within the question. Do we know how fast it hit the ground? No, we don't, but we want to find it out. Do we know the acceleration? Well, if this is on Earth, which most things are, then we can say the acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, which equals 9.81 meters per second squared. Do we know the time? No, we don't. Now, one thing which is really important is that the acceleration here, I'm gonna take as a constant, and therefore Suvat equations apply. And the reason for this, the reason that we have a constant acceleration is because that we can ignore the effect of air resistance. What I've said is that the air resistance is negligible, and that means over these kind of short distances, low speeds, fairly streamlined objects, it's gonna have no effect. Obviously, if something's falling a long way, or you've got things with a particularly large surface area, then that, can't, that won't always be true, and then SUVAT may not be the best equations to use. So here I have my data, and the first thing I want to find out is how fast does it hit the ground? Well, in order to find out this final velocity, I can use S, U, and A. I need to have a SUVAT equation without a T term in it. And you should recall, that v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. If I put the numbers into this, I can say that v squared is equal to 0 squared, which is just 0, plus 2 times 9.81 times 2. That means v is equal to the square root of 39.24. So this means my final velocity is equal to 6.264 meters per second. But that's not good enough. That's not an appropriate answer. I've been given S to two significant figures, A to three, and therefore I can really only justifiably give this to three significant figures, perhaps one more than the raw data there. So I can say that the final velocity is equal to 6.26 meters per second. When it comes to working out the time, I could use any of the SUVAT equations, so I've got four knowns and one unknown. The one I'm going to use is that V is equal to U plus AT. So we now know the final velocity, 6.26, and that's equal to zero, plus 9.81 multiplied by t. When I rearrange all of this and I do some calculations, I can find that the time taken is about 0 0.63855 seconds, which again, uh, to three significant figures, is equal to 0 0.639 seconds. The final thing I'm going to do is have a bit of a sense check. Does that sound about right? If I drop something at head height, does it take about two thirds of a second to hit the ground? And yes, it does. So this is the approach. You've got the question, you've got a real-life situation, draw the diagram, list out SUVAT vertically and list any assumptions made, and finally select the right equation, put the numbers in, and give your final answer to an appropriate number of significant figures.